Hello and welcome back to Lord Fett Gaming Plays Bars Gate 3. I'm your host, Lord Fett. In this Bars Gate 3 build video, we're doing the Pure Monk Weight of the Open Hand Tavern Brawler build. Yeah, sorry, no special title on that. It's a long one. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more Bars Gate 3 builds like this. Do not forget to hit the bell so be updated and much more. Now, let's go ahead and get the pros and cons definitely out of the way. Here we go. Number one. This uh, build is very strong in single target stuns or single target anything, like for example, push attacks and such. Number two, this monk's gonna have high mobility as long as you're not wearing any armor. Number three, multiple attacks per turn. And number four, this one I felt like it's good as well. You uh, guessed it. Now, low cost on equipment. Number five, you're gonna have very high strength and dexterity with this build. So, you could be one strong monk. And another advantage I definitely like to use is uh, elixirs. Yeah, when you use certain elixirs, you're going to be really a beast with this build. Now, the uh, pro, uh, I should say the cons of this build. Number uh, one, it has very low health. Yeah, unfortunately, it's stuck at 10 constitution. You're going to need items to boost that up. And you're not going to have the burst damage like a two-handed weapon user, or I say like a heavy crossbow user, definitely. And for area effect, extremely limited. And your monk, uh, I should say energy or I call it Monk Fuel, or Kai. Yeah, once that goes bye-bye, that is it there. You're a little bit hampered. So let's go ahead and start up with the character creation process. Here's the deal, everyone. We're gonna go over the races. Before we do that, I always do in my builds on what characters you could definitely go for this. Actually, you have three choices to do it. You could either make Lysel or Karlak into a Monk if you want to. A little bit odd, but that's alright. You can do the Dark Urge as a monk as well, since the Dark Urge can be any class of the game. Also, your Hirelings is good for that. Now, let's do go over the races, shall we? Now we're done with a little introduction, so let's go talk about the Elves. Yeah, first of all, they have base 9 meter movement speed. That is really good for this build. You're going to need it. We're not caring about the weapons and armor. No, we're going bare on both of those. Now, Dark Vision... 12 meters. See in the dark, that's always perfect. Fate Ancestry advantages against being charmed and cannot be magically put to sleep. That's a double bonus. Wood Elves add that 1.5 movement speed for, for being a Wood Elf, so that's 10.5 per round. You're going to need mobility for this build and you're going to get it. Big time. So let's uh, go over the Tieflings. Now they have 9 meter, uh, I say, uh, base movement speed, which is good. Now, Dark Vision up to 12 meters on that, which is uh, great. Again, see, in the dark is always good. Hellish Resistance, they uh, take half fire damage and have resistance to fire. Great things. Zario Tieflings, I say uh, this, I should say, level 0 spells good. Get you advantages on performance intimidation checks. It's like a little edge you need. Just trust me. And uh, the, the one smite you can't use, but the other one can, you can use with your fist. Now, let's talk about the Drow. First, they got Dancing Light. Later on, they get Darkness. Yeah, just like your typical drow, folks. Uh, base racial uh, speed is 9 meters. You're going to need mobility. Now, uh, as for uh, drow weapon training, yeah, we're going to ignore that. Yeah, we're going to use uh, robes and such like that and bare fists. They can see 24 meters in the dark. That is great. And also, they ha have the same thing as the elves. Advantage against being charming cannot be magically put to sleep. Let's talk about the humans. And by the way, the drow sub races are just flavor text. Now, humans get 9 movement speed. Meters and they get human versatility. So human versatility is this everyone. Let me switch to a monk real quick That's when you get an extra skill point. So for example, we're gonna go ahead and say we're uh, outlanders Instead of our usual uh, four we get five now total we get pick a bonus one so we get like for example we get athletics acrobatics insight and Of course survival we get your, your pick perception since our wisdom we're gonna be up to 14 Medicine, you uh, name it. Any of the other skills we could definitely use to abuse or slay a hand since our deck series is really up there. So next up is to get the Yankee. Underdog race. They're actually good for this build. Ast uh, Astral knowledge. They gain proficiencies of skills of a chosen ability score. That is good. Now they get Mage Hands. They start with later on to get Misty Step, a teleportation spell, and they get Long Jump. That's great for this build. 9 meters uh, for movement speed, which is good. Uh, we'll ignore that because we're not going to use any uh, armor. We're using cloth and our fist. Dwarves, here we go. 7.5 movement speed per turn. This is very good. 
Uh, another thing is, we'll ignore that since that's weapons. Dark vision has up to 12 meters for your basic dwarves. That's real good. Seeing the dark is always great. Dwarven resistance, they have advantages on save drones against poison and resistance to poison damage. That's good starting out. Now, if you pick a gold dwarf, your hit points is uh, one extra. That's pretty good for the setup, by the way, since our hit points going to be a little bit low. Now, half elves, they have 9 meter movement speed. That's uh, good. Well, nor the uh, human side, that's the weapons and armor. Yeah, we're not going to use uh, heavy armor and our weapons. No. Dark vision, they got the elven side of that, which is 12 meters. That's the upside. And the other side is uh, they have advantages against uh, being charmed. And, of course, they can't be magically put to sleep. Now, wood elves tack 1.5 meters just like their wood elf side for the half wood elves. As for drow, yeah, you get the dancing light spell, which is not bad at all. So let's go to halflings. No, I mean uh, dragonborn, sorry. Dragonborn. Uh, That's 9 meter movement speed. However, there is a whole bunch of flavor to that. Now, if you pick the black color, you get acid breath and resistance to acid. Yeah, acids can be a pain in this game. Now, blue gives you lightning breath, which is good, and uh, also resistance to lightning. That's another great thing. Uh, brass, you get fire. You get that right. You do fire breath, which is good. And uh, you get resistance to fire. Now, uh, bronze, they get lightning breath, same as the others. And resistance, you guessed it, lightning. Now, let's go on. Copper, they get acid breath. And uh, here's the best part. They get, of course, uh, resistance to acid. Gold, they get fire breath, and you uh, guessed it, resistance to a fire. Uh, green here, they get uh, poison breath, which is all right, and resistance to poison. That's the weakest one in green, by the way. Avoid it. Red, they get fire damage, and of course, you guessed it, resistance to fire. Now, silver, they get the frost version of frost breath, and resistance to a frost, which is really good. And white, same thing as the other one. Frost damage, which is frost breath, and uh, resistance to, you uh, guessed it. Frost. I go for acid, fire, lightning, and a frost. If you can go that route. We got one more race, the half orcs. They're nine meters per turn, which is good. Uh, another thing is they can see in the dark up to 12 meters. That is real good. Now, here's a good thing I like. Uh, this one, this ability is when you're down to zero hit points, you get one hit point back. When you're down, this is probably once for a long rest, which is good. Savage attacks, when you land a critical hit with a melee weapon or so. Yeah, extra weapon dice. That's all right, but still, that's okay. Now I pick uh, half orcs. Those are good. Gith Yankee, human, and elves are the best way to go. I'm gonna go ahead and select Gith Yankee for this build. Now for our monk abilities, let's go over them real quick. Flurry of blows. You do eight to fourteen damage average. Now you punch in uh, quick sessions of that, which is good. Now kite. That is your monk fuel. That uh, also helps your abilities and such. You get to use unarmored defense. So when you're not wearing any armor at all, your wisdom modifier gets added to your armor class. So if your wisdom modifier is three, attack three to that. Dexterous actions. So for instance, if your dex is higher than your strength, then you'll be your dexterity will be up there for for your damage modifier instead of strength. This is a strength build, so we'll ignore that a little bit. Death strikes. So attack with monk attacks. Armor attacks is one to four blunt damage, unless uh, normal damage is higher, which is a uh, good. And the last but not least, bonus unarmed strike. After making an attack with a monk weapon or while unarmed, you can make another attack as a bonus action. By the way, that's real good. Now for backgrounds, we're going to pick Outlander. I felt like that's the best because it gives you athletics and survival. Honorable mention is, I think, a soldier. That is the way to go, which is intimidation and athletics. So, But I like Outlander better because the other uh, two there, yeah, survival and athletics. Now, ability scores, this is going to be a little bit different than my normal builds. First of all, I'm going to put strength to 17, because we're going to get one strength at level 4, and then get that maxed out at level 8. So we're going to have 20 high strength by the time we get to level 8. Dexterity, we'll keep at 16. We'll get that to 18. Now, if we do the mirror loss, that'll be up to 20. Strength, we're going to put up to 22, so this is all good. Constitution, unfortunately, is at 10, so that is the downside. A little bit less hit points than our, I should say, other class. Intelligence at 8. This is our weak point here, unfortunately. Wisdom at 14, so this way our uh, modifier will be at 2, which is a good thing. Yeah, the monks uh, AC is based off wisdom modifiers. And also, I'll, also I am that boost up there, I think, uh, as well for attacking. Charisma at 8. That's going to be our weak point there.
Now for skills, you want athletics, acrobatics, insight, and survival. Those are your four main skills for this monk build. Now if you pick a human, you could do slay of hands, stealth, or if my my case, I should say go for perceptions. You spot more things than you should. But still, those are the uh, four skills I suggest that you should definitely do. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, select those. Yep, I already did. And that's about it really for the character creation. For the next part is build video, we're going to use the higher link to level up from 2 to 12. It is now go ahead and time to level up our monk from 2 to 12. Our lovely hiring here will definitely help out with that department. And uh, please note, you're going to be using cloth armor or robes and, of course, your fists during this build. No weapons at all, so keep that in mind. So this way you get the extra attack and benefit from Tavern Brawler as well when we uh, do get to level 4. But for now, I'm going to go over each and uh, every one of the class features and actions we get for every uh, level. So uh, let's start out with, uh, first of all, our uh, Monk Fuel. Yep, you heard me right. That's what we're calling it. Now uh, we get additional points. So, yeah, we get to do another build to here. So, which is uh, nice. Very useful. On our movement, so long as we're not wearing any armor or using a shield, our movement is increased by three meters. That's useful. So, we're starting to get our mobility up there. If you're wood elf, you're really up there. Patent defense, attack rolls against your, you have disadvantage and you have advantage on dexterity saving throws. We have high dexterity saving throws. So, this is going to be helpful if we use this ability. Cost a uh, point. Step of the wind dash, double your movement speed, jump uh, much more longer as a bonus action for one round. That's real good. Again, it costs a point. Step of the wind, disengage. So if we're in trouble, we pop this baby, we disengage, and get out of there. Of course, it costs a point to abuse and use. Ding, level three, everyone. Let's go ahead and do this, my friends. So we get to select our, you guessed it, subclass. First, as a race, we get our get the Yankee jump. Now, other races might apply. Now, we have Way of the Open Fist. So, we get Flurry of bl uh, Blows, Topple. In other words, we get to put our foe in a prone status if they don't make a save. And now, we get Stagger. Now, we uh, do is uh, make them Stagger, which is uh, good. Now, other option is when we do this, we push them back. And if we do it right, we we'll push them off a cliff. However, you lose some loot. Up to you all on uh, that. So, we get three types of Flurry of Blows, which is good. And uh, that's about it for this level. Ding, level four. So let's uh, go at it. So here we go again. So here's what we get. Another uh, additional monk fuel, aka point. And we get slow fall. So when we pop this baby, we get our resistive falling damage. Now for this level, we're going to go ahead and do tavern brawler. We're going to even up our strength. That's why I put it at 17. So uh, let's do that. And now let's go over. Yes, yeah, uh, now our strength's at 18. And uh, so when we uh, make an unarmed attack or uh, improve weapon or throwing, our strength modifiers add it twice to the damage and attack rolls. We're going to have really high strength. If we use the elixir that gives us 27 strength, we're going to be shot up there like crazy. See? Yeah. So instead of 4 for a modifier, it'll be 8 thanks to Tavern Brawler. And that does apply to unarmed attacks as well. And here we are at level 5. We get ourselves another monk fuel point. Yeah, we're going to call it that for short. And we get extra attack, so so we get another attack to use and abuse. This is going to be very good for a monk, so more attacks, more the merrier. Stunning strike possibly stuns the target. That's in melee range. Or you could do it unarmed. So when you do unarmed, you can do some damage and you stun your foes, which is good. Dang, level 6. So everything's starting to look up. Uh, we're getting more powerful, and we get some new features. Another monk fuel point. And, oh, look at this. Improve on arm movement so long as we're not using an armor or shield. Now we get the movement increased by 4.5 meters. Now, uh, this does this your unarmed attacks are magical, so we get to bypass resistance and immunity if anybody's not using magical weapons. So our fist basically plus one and beyond. Now, uh, this one here uh, costs a monk point, however, your hands uh, saps the energy from our foes and we do necro damage, so that's three to six. And that's not bad. And here's another type of attack. Now we uh, infl inflict their mind. This is great against casters. We do a three to six psychotic damage. And uh, here's another one. This is a good one. Um, the same, uh, same thing as the other two. Instead, we do three to six radiant damage. So we can use those features. And we get ourselves wholeness of body. So this uh, heals 18 hit points, 
regenerate your half year of monk fuel and it creates a wholeness for about I say three rounds so this is a good uh, uh, feature and I think wholeness means is you don't attack or so you just uh, meditate I might be wrong on that now we're at level seven we get ourselves another monk fuel point yeah we're calling it that folks make it easier for you we get evasion so instead of taking half damage we do a successful saving throw we take none so spells yeah we get started to have advantage against those with our high dexterity saving throws you can see that more often than not Stillness of mind, so if you're charm or fright in your mind, make the uh, get rid of that. So in other words, those go bye-bye, which is not very good for this uh, build here. Now everyone, we're at level 8, so every level of 4, you're noticing we're getting feats. So we get ourselves a feat, so we get ourselves another monk fuel point. Yeah, that's right. We get another of those, so we abuse more abilities. Ability improvements, we're going to put strength up to 18 and stop there. Now, we'll hit the cap real quick with this build for strength. We just need a strength potion. We'll get that to 22 down the line. So let's level up some more. Dang, level 9, everyone. So we're at the uh, last four levels. And let's talk about what we get. Another monk fuel point. Yeah, we're going to get those every level. So get used to that. Number uh, 2. Uh, advance on our movement. So difficult terrain doesn't slow us down. And we could jump an additional 6 meters while not wearing any armor or shield. Now, uh, Kai Resonating Punch. You do 4 to 11 damage. If a creature uh, hits you, it's like a counter punch. And that is also stored later on to, you know, do something else called uh, Resonating Blast. And that's the uh, bonus action as well if we want to go that far. And here's another thing. Uh, Kai Resonating Blast. AoE damage of 3 to 18. A anybody around the monk for 5 meters will take the damage. So when that happens, get everybody out of the way. And of course, uh, everybody else gets blasted. That's another AoE. It's our only one, really. Now at level 10, our monks getting more powerful. We're finding more armor. We're finding the right equipment. We're getting the right setup. We get ourselves another monk fuel point. Yep, get used to that. And more movement speed. So your movement speed is now uh, increased by 6 meters while you're not wearing an armor or using a shield. Now, purity of body, you're immune to poison. Damage cannot be poisoned and diseased. Which is uh, good. So this is another thing uh, we have immunity on. Which is great because we're monks. So we're purifying our body at this point in uh, time. So let's go to 11, shall we? Now we're at level 11. We're getting close to the cap, folks, here. And our monk's starting to get a lot more powerful. Now, we get ourselves another monk point. There you go. And uh, here's a subclass feature. Uh, after a long rest, you gain sanctuary. So you do any other action, you know, it breaks sanctuary. So you're basically immune to all damage and such. This is a great way to start out against certain hard boss fights. So uh, let's go to level 12 next. Ding, level 12, the final frontier. Yep, you heard me right, folks. So let's go ahead and go over that. We get ourselves another monk fuel point and another feat. So we can't do strength. We're cap out that. We're going to do dexterity. We'll leave that at 18. The mirror loss will cap that us at 20, which is uh, good. So this way we equip some more better equipment along the way. So we have plus four dex modifier. And that's about it for you uh, guessed it. Level 2 to 12 for leveling up. So let's talk about the next part of this build video. Permanent stat boosts. And Baldur's Gate 3, there are three chances to boost up your permanent ability score. So here we go. Now in Act 1, if you decide to fight Auntie Ethel for the first time, drop her underneath 10 hit points. She'll grovel to you saying, spare me, I'll give you a ability plus one item of your choice. I'm going to say avoid your paladin in doing this in case they will become an oath breaker. So either yourself or your other party members drop her hit points down to under 10. And if you're going to go ahead and go for that, I'll probably say either strength or uh, dexterity. Now, this is important, Act 2. So when we get to Act 2, here are some requirements. Number one, you got to have a stare on your party. And number two, you got to play at the cool at the Moonrise Towers. In other words, don't go all uh, blazing guns and whatever or not. So you play it cool with a stare on you in your party. You have to have him by Adraja. She is the female drow that sells some wonderful potions and some best endgame gear. You'll see it when you uh, definitely check out her shop. Now, uh, after you donate blood, she wants Asteron to bite her. Allow this to happen. You'll get a disapproval from Asteron. However, there are a bunch of ways to boost up your approval rating with Asteron big time. When this happens, she gained plus two strength potion. When you drink that, you automatically gain plus two strength. This is very dire for this build. 
well, you have automatically 20 strength by the time we get to level 8. And when we do this, unless you're at level 7 or so, we get ourselves 22 strength total thanks to this potion. Really important. I'll, I'll go over the details in greater details on uh, that and show you a demonstration of it too. Last but not least is the Mirror Loss. So after passing some intelligence check, which is usually Arcana or Religion or both, uh, what happens is you have to take a loss on stats by minus two. Now uh, here's the deal everyone about that. So uh, the Mirror Loss does uh, is the uh, following. There's six options you lose and a seven one which you try to fake it. Do not be deceptive or otherwise the mirror will say no, you get nothing. So after you uh, do the loss, then uh, what happens is you get three choices. With a hidden charisma check, you get yourself plus one charisma automatically and a plus two stat of your choice. I advise going dexterity, this way you bump it up to 20, you'll be fine. Now you don't pass the, one of the charisma checks, you only get plus two stat of your choice then, then go for dexterity. Now uh, if you're unlucky on the, uh, I should say, the charisma rolls, you get nothing, nada. Good idea to, when you get to mirror loss, boost up your intelligence via respec and charisma. So I'm going to talk about a demonstration of, you guessed it, the plus two strength potion. Once you have a stare on your party, allow him to bite, of course, our favorite female drow who sells some wonderful in-game items. Yeah, have her be bitten. Once that happens, not only you get the uh, potion that is of your race that you donate it, just remember uh, there will be an after fact the next day. You also get this very nice potion. It should be coming up past this uh, tiefling one I have of my paladin. Potion of Everlasting Vigor. This will automatically give you plus two strength as I mentioned. So for example we have our paladin here of my playthrough series. We're going to pop that and there goes your strength from 18 to 20. Now in this case it will be 20 to 22. So that's about it for this part. Now here is the mirror law, so let's uh, go over uh, this uh, now. So once you do pass the checks, you'll be giving a choice. I'm going to go through each of the six choices and what ability score it does boost up. Now uh, number one is strength. Normally I say go for it, however I want to make sure I get that dexterity to 20. So we have an excuse of not using some of the 18 dexterity items in our set or in the armor. Yep, see so there's your plus two strength, that's number one. Number two is plus two dexterity. That's what we're going to be picking for this build. Number three is plus two constitution. Number four is plus two intelligence. Number five is plus two wisdom. And number six is plus two charisma. So remember when you uh, get your loss in the mirror after you're done, remove curse will get rid of the loss. The boosts are permanent. In other words, you uh, guessed everyone once again. Yeah, they're yours to keep. No uh, losses or anything like that, thanks to Remove Curse. Now for this build, go for Dexterity. This will get your Dexterity up to 20 when you get to level 12. So let's go over the before and after. Here are the before and after permanent stat boosts, aka permanent ability scores boosts. So here's the before as if you're level 12 and you did none of that or didn't use the items just yet. Strength will be at 20, Dexterity 18, Constitution 10, Intelligence 8, Wisdom 14, and Charisma 10. Now, uh, this is after Strength 22, thanks to Plus 2 Strength Potion. Dexterity 20, thanks to Mirror Loss. Constitution 10. Intelligence to 8, Wisdom 14, and Charisma 10. Now, if you do Auntie Ethel, you do Constitution or Wisdom. However, here's the deal. There'll be odd numbers. Now, very end of the game, they'll even up nicely. So, up to you on that. i probably say more Wisdom because there is a Constitution Necklace. And that's about it for permanent ability score boosts. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and talk about the tadpole powers. I did split the tadpole powers into two categories before and after using the Astral Touch tadpole. So let's start with the before. Here is the before the Astral Touch tadpole. Favorable beginnings, boosts attack rolls, or gives you advantage and dialogue. Now, dialogue we're not going to use much. We'll have someone else talking for us. Attack rolls, we're going to abuse this if we have to face against certain tough foes. Call of the weak, when a creature has few hit points less than a number of tadpole powers, it dies instantly. So we have five tadpole powers. This creature has four. It dies. It goes bye-bye. Really useful. Sonic Backlash, when a foe casts a spell, you do 1d4 damage per caster level. 
Now, this is a nice ability to annoy the heck out of spellcasters. Force tunnel, charge forward, and draws no attack when you do this. If a foe's far away from you, you want to charge, abuse this. Drain ability and attack can either drain strength, which is melee, or dexterity and range. We're going to use the strength more for this. So this way, when you attempt to, of uh, course, do a strength saving throw, they lose their strength. Yeah, you're going to have advantage against them. So let's go ahead and do the after you use the astral touch tab hole. Now here's the tab hole powers after you use the astral touch one. And by the way, welcome to the halfway point of eating brains for the rest of your life. Well, not really. Anyhow, here we go. Black Hole, this is one OP AoE attack. This has five charges for long rest. It does ton of damage. I used this in end game and late game. Very abusive. Now next up is Fly. Gain ability to fly, just like the Fly spell. Nice mobility thing. We have enough mobility. We need more, as always. Repulsor, this is an AoE pushback damage attack. So many foes surround you. Use this to push away in case you're in danger. Use Holdness of Body, the one that heals you, and run away some more. Free cast, next ability, spells, or anything else is free of charge to use. This is really useful, folks. So if we want to use that one ability to get our, our say, Monk Fuel in halfway back, we uh, pop free cast, then we pop that ability, and we're set. We can use it again. That's about it for Tadpole Powers. Let's talk about Gear of Ice. For the recommended equipment, I did split in two categories. One by gear you should get by the end of Act 1, aka before entering the Shadow Curse Land, and in-game gear. Now, uh, please note if it says certain act, make sure you do not leave the area and the act until you get said item. One more thing, we're going cloth here, so no uh, light to heavy armor or anything of that nonsense. So let's begin with gear you should get by the end of Act 1. Now, this is the two best helmets I did find in Act 1. The Haste Helm gains momentum for three rounds. That gives you 1.5 movement speed. As a monk, that's very important. This is an unlocked chest in the Blighted Village in Act 1. Here's a good alternative, Circlet of Psionic Revenge. When you succeed a saving throw, the foe that caused the throw takes 1d4 psychic damage. Now, if you're a Githyanki monk, you gain the following link. Plus one bonus to Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma saves. Very valuable, especially intelligence and charisma, since you're on the weak side of that. Inside a chest in the Quizzler's Chamber at the Githyanki Crush in the Mountain Pass in Act 1. Do not leave that area without it. Here's some armor. It is, I should say, definitely cloth. Yeah, you want your monk bonuses if you're not wearing any armor from light to heavy. Armor of the Unhibited Cusco. While patent defense is active, the wearer can use the reaction to make an unarmed strike against any attacker that misses. So if they miss, you get a bonus attack. Give Thurless Boots to Thryn in the Underdark Part 2, Grimforge Area in Act 1. Those boots, by the way, are the boots of speed. So if you think about and want to lose those, that's fine just for this playthrough for the monk. Here's a good alternative, the Protect C Sparks Wall. High spell casting, you gain a plus one bonus to spell saves DC. We're not going to really use this. We're going to use this one instead. Sparks wall armor, the wearer has plus one armor class and saving throws as long as they have lightning charges. Now, there's a few items that will give you that, so you definitely want this. This is a rubble pile in the Grimforge Iron Dark Part 2 area in Act 1. It's a long process to get, so look for any rubble pile. Here are two gloves I figured are the best for Act 1. Gloves of Cinder and Sizzle. Your arm on arm attack deals 1 to 4 fire damage. That's the main use for it for this build. Now, uh, other thing is you do Scorching Ray. I didn't write that down, but here we go. Scorching Ray is shoots 3 rays. Each of them does 2 to 12 fire damage. Once per long rest, by the way. Lay Esther sells this in the Mountain Pass in Act 1. Yeah, clean out her inventory, definitely. Here's a nice alternative, Gloves of Dexterity. Dexterity is set to 18. With this build, you're at 16. This is a good setup. Until, of course, you uh, get that Dexterity to 18. And also, this gives you a plus one attack. This is at the Gift Yankee Crutch. I'm going to say Merchant Jira sells this in Act 1. So, do not leave the Gift Yankee Crutch in the Mountain Pass until you buy it. In fact, clean out her inventory. Steal her gold if you can. After uh, that, go kill her. As for Boots... I figure these two are the best. Boots of disintegrating night walkers cannot beat in web, entangle, or in stair, and can't slip on grease or ice. Gain misty steps just like the spell, nowhere to teleport around. If you get Yankee, you get two of those.
eventually. That does include his boots too. True Soul Near drops this in the Grimforge Underdark 2 area in Act 1. You're going to have to kill him for it. Trust me. He's annoying. Go for it. Now it's a good alternative. Boots of Genile Striding. The wearer's movement speed is unimpelled by difficult terrain. Blurk sells this in the Mitochondria Colony in the Underdark Part 1 in Act 1. That's a Mushroom People Colony. Clean his inventory out. You'll thank me later. Here are two necklaces. Moondrop Pendant. When the wearers have 50% hit points or less, they don't provoke attacks of opportunity. This is really great because you're going to move around from time to time. Try not to be the main person that attracts attention. Let your paladin or fire do it, or even barbarian. Now, solve the Slew Knight magic chest puzzle in the Owlbear Cave in Act 1. Don't bring Shadow Heart with you when you're doing this. Keep her outside the cave or you get heavy disapproval from her. Here's a nice alternative, Amulet of Misty Step. Game Misty Steps just like the spell. This is in the Shadow Sanctum at True Soul's Gut Quarters in Act 1. There are ways to get in the quarters without stealing the key or killing the True Soul Gut. So let's move on. Here in the rings, Crusher Span. Movement speed increased by plus 3 meters. This is really good. You're going to need movement speed for this build. It'll help you out greatly. Steal or loot Crusher to get this in the Goblin Camp in Act 1. You want to be friendly with the goblins, go with the stealing route. Caustic Band, you deal plus two acid damage to foes. This is real nice. Adds acid to your fist. Now, uh, Dirtish Bone Cloak sells this at the Mitochondria Colony, Underdark in Act 1. Just like Blurg's magical items you want to clear out, this is the NPC you want to clean up as well. Here's two good alternative rings. Ring of Absolute Force, use of Thunderwave spell. If Absolute Branded, you deal one extra damage. Sergeant Thrin, the same one you just gave the Boots of Speed to, in Grim Forge, I should say, under Dark Part 2 in Act 1 has this. Either get him killed by someone else or you kill him yourself. There's a choice for that down the line. Now next up is the Sparks Wall. Cannot be electrocuted. Res electric resistance is also increased. Arcane Tower Basement under Dark in Act 1. There's some good stuff there. Loot it like crazy. I'm going to put this as a reminder for people who are thinking they should use other weapons, not on our attacks. You're using your fist, aka unarmed attacks. Those are your bread and butter of this build. Get used to them. Seriously, you're a monk. Simple as that. That'll be there for endgame weapons as well, as a reminder too. Now, next up are ranged weapons. We're just using it really for the items or the clicky. Now, uh, this one's the hunting short bow. I felt like this is good. Feller of monsters. You have advantage against monstrous type of enemies. One use of hunter's mark before long rest. Now, you're just really using this for the hunter's mark. Let's be blunt. Damon sells this at the Druid's Grove in Act 1. If you find any more uh, bows, like for Sam has plus one initiative or anything else in the mare, uh, go ahead and just equip it. You're not going to be using ranged weapons. You're going to be coming in front and close to them. This is just for, uh, like I said before, the clicky. Uh, AKA, we're going to use the item. That's all. Not uh, shoot with it. So uh, let's uh, go to end game gear. I'm going to go ahead and remind everybody once again. So if it says act and area, do not leave the act and area until you get said item this is going to be uh mainly focused on cloth items no heavy plate or anything of that you see in the other type of builds mask of soul perception gain a plus two bonus to the following attack rolls initiative rolls and perception checks yes yes and definitely yes you get that oh here's a bonus gain detect thoughts like the spell you don't have to use those potions no more long rest applies this is an Adelphi to steal on the second floor in Act 3. Yeah, that's a place where you go to, you know, hell. Here's a good alternative. Scabby Pugilist Circlette. Your weapon and unarmed attack deals additional 2 damage while being surrounded by 2 or more foes. Extremely useful. You should get this first when you see Mateus in Riventon in Act 3 if he is alive, the little tiefling. Let's move on. Now, next up to bat. Are the cloaks flesh melter cloak when where gets hit the attacker takes one to four acid damage this is an glilded chest and a house of healing morgue in act two do not leave this house of healing morgue in act two without this cloak now here's another two here's the first one cinder moth cloak attacker takes burning damage which is one to four fire damage per round just like the acid cloak airless uh, cyrus in the lower city sewers in act three drops this you have to fight him of course Here's the last one, Cloak of Protection. This is more defensive, but very useful for a monk. Plus one following armor class, that's AC, and saving throw. Sold by Core Master Tally at the last light in Act 2. Definitely clear her, out her inventory of items. 
She sells a lot for the rest of your party members. Here's a chess piece. Vest of Soul Rejuvenation. When the wearer succeeds on a saving throw against a spell, they regain 1 to 4 hit points. With a high dexterity and evasion, you're going to see that happen quite a bit often. The wearer can also use a reaction that makes an unarmed strike against any attacker that misses. So, they try to hit you, they miss, you hit them back. Simple as that. Plus 2 AC as a bonus. So, at the Sorcerer's Sundries Merchant in the lower city in Act 3, it could be... Roland or someone else in case he doesn't make it. Now here's a good alternative, Garb of the Land and Sky. While using Patent Defense, you also gain the benefit from the effects of Blade Ward. That means you have 50% I think resistance, if I remember correctly, against Blunt Piercing and Slashing. Really useful level 0 spell for the other casters. You get that free. While using Step of the Wind, the other one, your next attack roll has advantage and deals additional 1d8 force damage. This is a good type of DPS part. Now, it also is a plus one AC, nice bonus. So that Dandelone's Dancing Axe, that is the Dwarven who sells that stuff, that's Jihira's friend, and Wyme's Crossing in Act 3. You don't have Jihira with you, just look for a shot with a dwarf that sells some great weapons and armor. Here are the gloves, gloves of soul catching. Your unarmed attacks deals additional 1 to 10 force damage. This is really useful. I used it for the other builds. I couldn't use it, but this one, we're definitely abusing that. Now, once per turn on an unarmed hit, you regain 10 hit points. Really useful. It's a nice heal. Alternatively, you may go for the healing and gain advantage on attack rolls and save throws until the end of your turn. Oh, here's a bonus. Constitution plus 2. We have a Constitution at 10. That plus 2 will help you greatly. Reward for saving hope in the House of Hope in Act 3. You have to kill you know who, and then after that, she's alive, she'll give you the gloves for free. Here's a good off turn in case uh, you get hope killed or you don't care about the House of Hope. Gauntlets of the Tyrant. Your know, armor attack deals additional 1, 2, 4 force damage. You gain a bonus plus 1 to spell save DC, and you gain the command spell. That command spell you can make your foe drop their equipment, stand still, or run away. Very useful spell early on in the uh, game for paladins and such. Lord Gortash drops this in Act 3. Yeah, you're going to have to murder Lord Gortash for this, everyone. Let's uh, do go over the boots real quick. Boots of the Uninhibited Kushko. The wearer deals an additional damage equal to their Wisdom Modifier with Unarmed Strike. So, for example, if your Wisdom Modifier is 2 or 3, add that number to your Unarmed Strikes. Drop by the Gift Yankee Monk while defending the Dream Visitor after the Gift Yankee Invaders in Act 3. Yeah, that's a part where you figure out who the... Dream Visitor is in the story. Yeah, that one. Loot the monk's body before leaving. Very important. These boots are very valuable for this build. Now, for some reason, you messed up on that. Use the uh, Disintegrating Nightwalkers from Act 1. They're about the same good as the other ones, but it's a nice alternative. But still, try to go for the boots of the Uninhibited Crusco first. Here are two necklaces I do feel that's real good for in-game gear. Amulet of Greater Health, your constitution set to 23. Advantage on constitution saving throws. That's a lot of hit points, everyone, especially for this build. In the archives at the House of Hope in Act 3, here's the deal. Not only steal those, but also steal the gauntlets of Hill Giant Strength and give someone like Lysel or Karlak or anybody else who uses strength. Good alternative, Surgeon's uh, Subjugation Amulet, when scrolling a critical hit on a humanoid, the wearer can paralyze the target for two rounds. That is really useful, if they're paralyzed, bonus damage time or so. Miles Storm drops this at the House of Healing in Act 2. So uh, here's the deal on that, you can either uh, kill Miles Storm, so I'll get these gloves, um, I mean uh, necklaces, sorry about that, yeah, the necklace, or uh, better yet, Talk your way into having him kill his kill himself or uh, so. Shower Heart is the key to that, by the way. This way, no matter what happens, by talking or uh, otherwise, yeah, this will drop. Let's uh, go on to the rings. For the rings, Killer Sweetheart. When you kill a creature, your next attack roll will be a critical hit automatically. Very useful for this build because you can do some crits. Self same trial in the Gauntlet Shard in Act Two. You'll uh, definitely want to do is uh, kill your clone. The clone will have this ring and loot it up. Do not leave the self same trial in the Gauntlet of Shard in Act 2 without it. Just remind everybody once again. Ring of Regeneration. At the start of combat, you regenerate 1 to 4 hit points. Now, uh, the Sorcerer Sundry's vendor sells this ear rolling. 
for the other one in Act 3. Same place where you got the vest. Save some gold for it. Now, here's some good alternatives. I decided to list two of them. Ring of Free Action. You ignore the effects of difficult terrain and it cannot be paralyzed or restrained. We're mainly going for the paralyzation and restraint thing. Uh, Raja, that is your Strength Potion NPC who gave you that wonderful Strength Potion, sells this in Act 2 at the Moonrise Towers. Play it cool at the Moonrise Towers, do the potion thing in Act 2, and after that, clean out her inventory. Here's the other one. Risky Ring, gain advantages on attack rolls, however, disadvantages on saving throws. This is really good, folks. You want to go that route. The same person that gives you a Strength Potion and sells the Ring of Free Action will sell this as well. Oh, now it's clean out her in inventory. Just trust me on that. As for weapons, you're using a fist once again. Don't equip anything else. Your fist is the weapon. Your fist will crush things like crazy, especially in game. You have Tavern Brawler. You're going to be using that, your fist. Just trust me. Let's uh, move on to the ranged weapons we're using just for the item and stats, really. Dark Fire Short Bow. This is a plus two short bow. Gain resistance to the falling fire and ice. Really useful, can cast haste. Extra attack, plus two AC, double the speed movement, dex saves advantages. You get a wear down effect after, but still, it is really useful. Damien sells this in Act 2 at the last light end. For some reason you missed it, you might get lucky in Act 3 where he sells this as well at the forge. That's uh, there. I'm going to say this again, use the haste feature only for the short bow. Otherwise, use your fist. That's about it for equipment. Let's talk about potions and, of course, elixirs. Let's uh, go over potions and elixirs. Please note, I cannot, of course, poison my hands or something like that. Nope, you cannot. So we just only have two to talk about. So let's go over the potions. First of all, healing potions. Get all types. That is a huge must. Seriously. Potion of haste. Gain extra action. Plus two armor class. Advantage on dexterity save throws. Really useful and double speed movement. Now, the extra action could be another extra attack. So, yeah, you really want to drink this against boss fights and tough encounters. Potion of Flying. That's the same as the Fly spell. Really useful. Honorable mention, Potion of Vaulting. In other words, you'll uh, jump higher, farther, which is good. Let's talk about the Elixirs. Now, here are some Elixirs. Elixirs of Vigilance. Gain a plus five bonus to initiative. Really useful and cannot be surprised. Double useful. So when you're surprised, you cannot attack. You can't be surprised. In other words, is they won't attack you. Elixirs are Colossus. Increase your size. Great for jumping around, getting to foes. And again, mobility. Gain strength saved, which is good, and advantages. That's nice. Uh, also does 1d4 weapon damage. Well, I don't care about that. That's just used to be bigger and jump higher. So those are good. Elixirs of Viciousness. Increase your chance to land a critical hit. So... Instead of 19 to 20, now it's 18 to 20 land critical hit. Elixir of Cloud Giant Strength. Your strength is set to 27. This is the po elixir you want to drink. I should say definitely with boss fights in Act 3 and end game. Really good. Honorable mention is the other elixir of strength, which sets your strength, I think, to 21, which is good enough there. Elixir of Blood Loss. Upon killing your foe, you get 5 hit points and extra bonus action. So you kill someone, you get an extra action. And you have to have a good time with uh, punching him again. That's about it for potions and elixirs. Time for the combat test. We're going to go ahead and test out Act 1. When you uh, do start out, yeah, you're not going to be able to really get up there until you get to, of course, level 4 and 5. Especially Tavern Brawler. So I'm going to go ahead and test that right now. Let's see here. Hello, Mr. Uh, I just say Goblin and goodbye. All right, we one shot at 1. We can't use that again. And we took out another one. So, yeah, at this point, we could do some killing streaks. Sometimes we uh, do miss, but that's all right. Our main objective appears to do much damage as humanly possible. So that's what we are definitely doing. So let's go ahead and end the turn here on the two characters. Then use Shadow Heart. I'm just demonstrating at this point. Your monk start out the battle by taking out many foes. And towards the end... Yeah, your monk will uh, definitely do that again, or your party members will make it a one-round fight, which is uh, that you uh, definitely want. So let's uh, go ahead and stop here. And okay, we can't do anything else. And let's uh, get our paladin to do it. Yeah, see there now they're going to attack the monk. Yeah, I wish uh, my paladin would start the round. He would have been the tank. So sometimes your main characters who are the tank, I should say, party members, 
Well, uh, guess what? They're not really, but that's all right. And um, we're uh, taking out the uh, trash at this uh, point in time. So there we go. Now we're going to get this uh, goblin here to go down. And yeah, the goblin's going to die easily. Yeah, the goblin's busy with steroids, but that's all right. A monk's going to finish the job, and that should definitely do it. So let's uh, do that again. Yeah, definitely remember, uh, mash your monk fuel if you need to. If not, just punch away and other things like that. And that's how you uh, definitely ease Act 1 with this build. Now, later on in the act, with the right equipment and setup, you're going to be a real powerhouse at this point in time. So let's uh, go ahead and demonstrate the power of our monk ability. So now, like for example, the flurry blows does 472 damage. And of course, it could take out armor foes just like that. Our stunning strike, you should start using quite a bit because if their tough foes are stunned, they'll skip a turn. Very useful against tanking foes as well. Now, uh, if you uh, have that uh, explosive Kai, or say monk fuel, yeah, go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, if you have some gloves that heal, go ahead and do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the last parts of the battle with our uh, monk to demonstrate why the monk set the tone for the fight. Now, at uh, this point in time, the monk, uh, uh, friends, I should say, or uh, party members definitely did some damage. We could also throw our foes too, yes. If we want to do it because our high strength and tavern brawler yeah we could have some fun so i just did that just for fun let's go ahead and do unarmed strike since he's prone we could do extra damage so yeah when they're prone take advantage of that fully i'm going to stun this fool again oh well i killed him so anyways uh definitely take advantage of your stuns your mobility your flip fear your blows that is usually start at the first round and if you want to throw something or another foe from one to another, do that as well. Here are some final advice before I do end the video. Tavern Brawler is really great because with that, you do some very serious damage. Flurry of Blows are uh, wonderful as well, especially if you want to stagger certain foes, knock them down, or even uh, push them. You have your Monk Fuel abilities, go ahead and abuse that if you're in danger. Yeah, there's some goodness in that as well. Now, uh, definitely want to get those uh, boots when you enter Act 3 because it gives you Wisdom Modifier, adds to your uh, damage as well. Make sure you definitely use cloth and no weapons. That's what this build's all about. You have more AC, more bonus stuff if you're using a fist and just not wearing any type of armor at all. Good idea to have, like for example, a Paladin, Fighter, or even Barbarian tank for you, or even pets as a well. Now, once the monk set the tone of killing many foes, the battle will be definitely easier. Some fights will be lasting one round. Others, uh, even though one round is done, the foes will be on their knees. Just remember to experiment all the time. Move your position around a lot. If you need to escape, Misty Step is your uh, friend, especially with some of the items that has that as well. This is it for my Bars Gate 3 Pure Monk Way of the Open Hand Tavern Brawler build video. This is Lord Fent signing off. Thanks for watching. And have a great day or night, do please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more classic and modern Dungeons and Dragons walkthroughs, builds, guides, and more just like this. If you like what you see, then uh, go ahead and pick my suggestion on the upper left-hand corner or YouTube suggestion on the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and relax in this nice chair.